AMD just made a big move by adding fluid motion frame support to their preview driver for RX 6000 GPUs. That's upside down. Today we'll be looking at the RX 6800 XT, which now has access to this technology. And some of you are like, wait, doesn't FSR 3 already run on every GPU? Yes, but this isn't FSR 3. And in my last two videos I did on AMD fluid motion frames, I've seen people still confused about this. Uh, I think, honestly, maybe AMD should have spread out their launch of these two things because they aren't the same thing. And I think some people are conflating the two, uh, getting a little bit confused about this. So FSR 3 needs to be directly integrated into a game and uh, AMD Fluid Motion Frames is different. It runs through the driver. Both of them can generate frames by interpolating two frames and inserting an interpolated frame between them. Now you have more frames. The game isn't more responsive, but you get more frames on your screen. The difference is FSR 3 works better because it uh, has more access to game data because it's actually integrated into the game. The difference with fluid motion frames through the driver is that it doesn't need integration into the game, so it can work in any DX11 or DX12 game, but because it has less access to game data, uh, that means that it uh, you know, usually doesn't do as good of an interpolation, it's not UI aware, and it just frankly gives up if there's too much difference between frames. I've already done two videos on this technology. Also, they interact with VSync and FreeSync differently. Uh, currently, FSR 3 only paces frames correctly when it has VSync enabled, whereas Fluid Motion Frames can't have VSync enabled. It says it's not compatible, at least currently. Again, it's a preview technology not fully released. Uh, and we're also, um, I can't enable HDR currently with uh, fluid motion frames through the driver level. I've had people ask me to test out other games, like maybe racing games. Um, and, you know, also people have pointed out maybe it's useful in CPU limited situations. Because honestly, due to its drawbacks, so far I've been happy to see, to play around with this fluid motion frame technology, but I haven't run into a situation where I actually use it yet. So we're gonna be using an older system with an i5-9600K CPU to see if maybe we run into CPU limited situations where it would be useful. And we're also, uh, like I said, gonna try maybe some other game types, things like that. And uh, let's go ahead and hop into some games. But as cool as all of this frame generation tech is, first of all, it works best the higher your base frame rate already is before kicking it on. And secondly, achieving high frame rates through frame generation does not feel as good as achieving those natively with raw GPU power. And so you still might want to upgrade your graphics card and the simplest and fastest way to sell your old GPU to fund that upgrade is to sell it to today's sponsor, jawa.gg, by following the link in the pinned uh, comment or video description. Now, a lot of people don't want to sell their old hardware because they feel like it's going to be some kind of a hassle they've got to figure out. How do I deal with shipping, finding a buyer, waiting around, all of that? Well, at Jawa, it's as simple as this. You, you click the Get an Instant Offer button, you tell them about your GPU model and condition, Get an Instant Offer. You ship your, uh, fr uh, sorry, you ship it using a pr free shipping label that you can print out. Again, the shipping price is factored into their offer. Then they perform an inspection. They inspect the part to make sure everything checks out and then you get paid. Most sellers get paid within one business day after the part is received. And best of all, you can also save money by looking on their marketplace for used and new parts and using uh, the link in my video description and f using code ON10, you can get $10 off your first purchase. Again, follow the link in the video description and pinned comment. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is look at Forza Motorsport. I just reviewed the PC performance here and my comment section said, hey, try out AMD fluid motion frames through the driver on this game and see what happens. It can help you push through CPU limits. And you know, maybe because in a racing game, your camera's not swinging all over the place, it'll work pretty well. Currently, this is fluid motion frames turned off. We're filming the screen with 120 FPS camera. Uh, so we can try to get an idea of what's going on here. Also, I'm curious, okay, variable refresh rate with, with this technology turned off does seem to be working properly. This is my TV's uh, menu that's showing me that FreeSync is activated and everything is paced correctly. This is the AMD software up here. Um, okay, and we're getting about 64 frames per second. And AMD does recommend a base frame rate, you know, in the 60 to 70-ish range. Um, when, uh, when doing this technology. So our benchmark run shows that we're around the correct base frame rate to use it. 
So now let's actually try it out. So I'm gonna press Alt-R. This is opening up my AMD uh, software overlay. I'm gonna turn off my TV's little monitor thing there so we can actually see the menus. And again, under the game, you will find AMD Fluid Motion Frames if you have this preview driver. And we can go ahead and kick that on. Now, uh, it does say that it is now activated and the frame rate number did go up in the AMD software overlay. Now, this is an important note. Um, if I go to the, uh, so in the AMD software, you go to performance tab, metrics, it has an overlay here and you have various settings and whatnot. Um, AMD's software overlay picks up the generated frames uh, as part of its frame rate counter, but something like MSI Afterburner and probably the game benchmark itself will not pick them up because they're not actually part of the game. You know, I guess they're being, you know, generated through the driver level. Also, AMD's driver uh, software overlay can tell, tell us the frame gen lag. This is not your total system uh, latency, but it is the additional latency that they are saying is being added due to the frame interpolation. Okay, let's go ahead and restart the benchmark and compare results. Now this won't, I won't be able to tell you how it feels, but I can actually look at the screen and you can, uh, you know, compare it to what we just looked at before as well. Um, I feel like I'm getting some judder on the camera, a little bit less smooth, not the end of the world. The base frame rate numbers are down because there's a performance overhead. And yeah, I just opened up this overlay and it doesn't seem to be free syncing properly. Although uh, AMD documentation for this, I think says it should respond properly to free sync. Although right now we're around 119 FPS anyway. Okay, interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I was a little disappointed to see it seem to not free sync properly. That's something we see with FSR three uh, frame generation currently but I thought was supposed to work better with this technology. And this one's not compatible with vSync, but the other one was. I'm gonna run this back again. And again, look for details on the smoothness of the motion on the screen. Again, only so much of this will come through in a YouTube video. Uh, the motion on the cars does seem slightly juddery. Uh, but again, is that just the game or is it the camera? I'm looking at text on the sides here, trying to see how well interpolated that stuff is. Um, interesting. I don't hate the image I'm seeing on my screen right now. So we're getting more frames and it, and it doesn't look just immediately obnoxious or anything like that. I will want to actually try it out in a game. Uh, but I'm also going to, um, let's see, turn off the fluid motion frames again and try to watch a little bit more of a side by, uh, of a uh, uh, comparison again to fluid motion frames off. So restart that benchmark run. So again, this is the fluid motion frames off. I'm gonna be looking for things like the, the pacing of the frames, but there's gonna be a bit of a judder on things anyway, because I'm running the game, I think in a non V-synced mode. Yeah, the, the white car judders anyway, that wasn't the fluid motion frames itself doing that. And there's still a bit of a blurring to the writing on the edges, although I feel like it was a little bit more garbled in the, um, in the generated frames. Now, overall, um, that was interesting. I think it will also be interesting to try actually racing and see how that interacts with it and, and how that feels. But overall, it seems like at least during the benchmark run, the generated frames never quit, uh, which they, they do just kind of stop working if you get too large of a difference between frames. So, uh, which is what I'd seen in some of the other games and was one of my biggest issues with this technology. Also, my issue has been with uh, HUD elements like, like a camera, uh, you know, targeting reticle, things like that. Uh, can I just like free play something? I don't know, guys. Quick event setup. Can we just start a race? I, I don't. I don't really play this game, guys. I. I, I just wanna. I just wanna start a race. Accept everything. Accept all the options without reading them. That's one way to, to live your life. 
<laughs> okay, so um, let's see. I think we're starting off with fluid motion frames off. Let me double check that. Yes, yeah, so fluid motion frames off. I'll start driving a little bit. Did I just click start race? I hope I click start race. I was just tapping the A button. Uh, we'll be using the uh, controller. Now, one thing about using a controller as well is that um, I generally, in like a first person shooter type of game, I'm more sensitive to my mouse movements connection to my camera, those kinds of latency things. Is this car in front of me way too slow or something? Okay, so we currently don't have any, um, uh, no fluid motion frames enabled. Our base frame rate is 70-ish, which would be ideal for enabling fluid motion frames. Oh, apparently if I bump that joystick, I look at my camera, other stuff. All right, so there's that. I've gotten a feel for it without fluid motion frames enabled. Let's pause for a second. And let's click fluid motion frames on. And oh, away we go. So one thing to keep your eye out on, uh, I'm trying to drive while also keeping my eye on this, is if our fluid motion frames um, turn off, if they disable. Right now they seem to be staying on. That was one of the questions, is if a racing game would do a better job of keeping that enabled because there's not going to be as wide of a difference between frames. It is a little bit hard to race while staring at frame rate counters and image quality, but I'm, I'm trying. I do feel like when the windshield wipers go past the text on the car that it might not be looking quite right. It's not super distracting, um, but there it does like the windshield wipers in general do you guys see that? Doesn't that look a little bit garbled? <laughs> like, it's not the end of the world. Um, we could also try some other camera angles. What do I do? Press tab. Um, let's try coming out of the car for a little bit. I am not really into uh, racing games that much myself, so please don't judge the driving abilities while staring at frame rate counters. But... Um, I mean, I'm not seeing any egregious issues on the image quality, but my real question is, do I feel like it's improving my experience overall? So I'm going to turn it off again, just for fun and comparison purposes. Because my other thing is, if you need a game to not have a lot of difference between frames, for this technology to work well and not, um, how should I put it? For, for this to work well and not just turn off because there's too large of a difference between frames, then is that really the kind of content where you're going to significantly notice the boost to frame rate? Uh, and I've got to say, it... <laughs> Like, if I'm going to enable the fluid motion frames, I have to feel like it's giving me a net benefit. Right now, the 70-something frames per second I'm at feels very responsive and, and, and like, looks really smooth. So, here, I'm going to try to... I'm, by the way, I'm intentionally slowing down to get a car in front of me. I want that for visual purposes. That wasn't my racing ability. <laughs> not, I know not the point of the video, but I felt the need to defend my honor for a second there. Um, yeah, so that's with fluid motion frames off. And again, my question is, okay, frame rate number goes up, but am I actually feeling like it's a better experience? Again, since these kinds of frames are not improving the responsiveness of the game, which is one of the two main reasons you would want higher frame rate, the only other reason you would want the generated frames, the higher frame rate, if it's not improving responsiveness, is this if it improves your visual quality. Uh, which higher frame rate can do by smoothing out motion on the screen, but I feel like it actually feels less smooth right now. It, it's it's subtle, but I feel like this actually is a little bit a little bit worse. Um, I'm staring too much at the fencing over here. I'm looking at that fencing. I, I feel like it's blurring a lot more in motion and uh, garbling a little bit when I have these generated frames turned on. Maybe it's my imagination, but I'm going to turn those off again. 
and again try to drive while actually looking at this and I know it's not exactly the same fencing now let's see if we round this corner there's fencing off in the distance there as well um, yeah guys so it I will say it seems to be holding the frame rate better in this style of game and it does seem to be working on the 6000 series GPU but I feel like the pacing and like garbling of things uh, on the edges here, this is again fluid motion frames on, I just feel like it looks slightly worse, and if I need a base frame rate of 70-ish before activating this, the game already looked smooth and didn't have those little increases to the um, garbling. Uh, that didn't feel like a smooth camera pan there either. The uh, These as the camera pans, do you see the judder? And part of that is we're over my monitor's max refresh rate now, so I think that's part of the problem. And that's the other issue with this technology, is that with it not being V-Sync um, v compatible, um, as your frame rate varies throughout the game. Yeah, so anyway, I, my, my overall verdict here is so far, this is my best experience with this technology out of the games I've tried. And I do think that this style of game uh, the way the camera pans more slowly is a better fit. But my overall conclusion on would I use it is still that I feel like this is less smooth and less visually appealing by a little bit, not by a lot, but a little bit worse than just playing with this technology turned off. And so far, unfortunately, that's kind of been my main um, take on it. I'm gonna try kicking that off again. Uh, because again, the, the two main reasons why you would want a um, a higher frame rate is either more responsiveness, with this, which this for sure doesn't get you, or better image quality, which this, um, again, I don't feel like it's getting me. Uh, in this style of game, I don't feel like the higher frame rate really helps all that much if my base frame rate's already here up in the you know 70s, 80s, 60s at times. And then, like I said, I think the little details on the sides of the screen, the, uh, the, the light posts as I take my hand off the controller, my goodness, uh, the light posts as, as I turn and things like that, they stay a lot uh, smoother. Here, let's, let, let's spin in circles. Uh, <laughs> let some cars get on the screen here. All right. Um, yeah, all of that feels smooth. All these turning feels smooth. All the fencing seems smooth with the, with the feature off. And I just realized I clicked uh, Alt-R while I wasn't paused, so now my car is running in reverse, in rewind mode or something. So great. Um, I guess we will just... Uh, did I just cancel the rewind? I, I don't know how the rewind feature works. Why would I ever rewind? I'm, 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 I don't make mistakes. Anyway, uh, this is frame generation back on one last time. Again, as the camera pans here, I feel like I'm getting choppiness on those uh, lamp posts, things like that. I'm wondering if this would work better, again, from an even higher base frame rate, but then you once again wonder, is it worth um, is it worth kicking on? But this is my best experience with it so far, and it is interesting that it's working on the 6000 series GPUs, and I am very interested if you guys have found a game where you feel like this is a net benefit, you do uh, feel like it's better with it on, and um, yeah, tell me about that in the comments section. Again, the suggestion had been a racing game, so here we are. All right, I hope all of you have an excellent day, and uh, it is cool that you can now play around with this on the 6000 series and see what you think. It's also a preview, so maybe uh, some even more issues would get ironed out, like hopefully HDR, maybe V-Sync, uh, things like that before the full release, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.